Design for manufacturing, or DFM, means designing products in such a way that they're easy to manufacture. It's crucial for any engineer or designer to understand its principles as it helps to develop products effectively and more cost efficiently. Hi, I'm Athena, and in this video by Hubs, we're diving into the overall DFM process, the necessary steps for a successful outcome, and how to get the most out of your own processes. The DFM process works by examining five key principles. Process, design, material, environment, and compliance and testing. For DFM to be most effective, you must be sure that you're using the right manufacturing process for any project. Do you need to manufacture a high volume batch of a certain part? Injection molding is probably your best option, but low volume, highly detailed parts may be best created with a 3D printing process, such as Moody Jet Fusion or selective laser sintering. The manufacturing process you choose will have a great effect on the final cost and efficiency of your project. Because of that, it's really important to factor in details such as materials needed, part quantity, properties of the parts, tools that have to be created, etc. Design. Once you have chosen a manufacturing process, you can begin designing the actual part you want to produce. Remember to consider important aspects related to your particular manufacturing process, such as wall thickness, surface details, texture or transitions. It's also important to note that, as a rule, DFM operates on a the simpler the better philosophy. Obviously, not every design can be simple, but the more complex the design, the riskier it becomes to produce. Choosing the right design software is also essential to the success of your part. For example, if you're designing a part for sheet metal fabrication but don't use software specific to that technology, your design may run into errors. Material. Choosing the right material for your project depends heavily on the application and use of the final part. You need to take into account the properties that you need for the final application. Think of heat resistance, water resistance, strength, flexibility, etc. Environment. Environmental factors will also affect the design of the parts you want to manufacture. Will the final product be under a great deal of stress or force, as you might expect in an industrial environment? Or will it be used in an office? Basically, you need to consider where and how your parts will be used. Finally, compliance and testing. It's possible that your parts need to follow industry-specific, internal and or third-party standards. For instance, if your components will be used in an environment in which food is present, your product must comply with all food safe standards and regulations. It's therefore important to consider all standards and plan for testing to ensure that these standards are met during the DFM process. In addition to the five main principles just discussed, these factors will also affect the DFM process. A lower number of parts may require higher relative startup costs, meaning higher unit prices. The more units you make, the lower the unit price becomes. DFM is all about simplifying, meaning the more complex the design, the higher the risk of a cost production process. How easy or difficult, in terms of both cost and time, will it be to source the materials and components? The answer will affect the entire DFM process. Try to think modularity during the design phase so that future projects may benefit from aspects of the original design. Adding surface finishes, color, custom markings and other aesthetic properties will make production more expensive and time-intensive. It's best to think about cosmetic qualities during the design process well before production starts. Applying the DFM process correctly reduces costs, lowers lead times and improves the quality of custom parts. Getting the most out of DFM will depend on the manufacturing process you use. DFM for 3D printing will require different considerations than CNC machining, injection molding or sheet metal fabrication. What's important here is to make sure that you're familiar with your manufacturing process and its advantages and limitations. DFM can be seen as a preventing measure in avoiding high costs and long lean times. To make the most out of it, it means knowing the ins and outs of your particular use case, application and manufacturing process. The HubSquad building platform uses DFM software to detect potential design issues before production begins, minimizing costs and possible delays. This way, you can be certain that you always receive the best price possible at the fastest turnaround times for your custom parts. With that, we have come to the end of this video. We hope it was helpful and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching and seeing you in the next video.